Hello. I just have one question for you. Are you still believers? Yeah. Okay, because I need a room full of believers for this because we are going to talk about something wild and crazy, and it's about your future. So what I need you to do is this. Imagine 15 to 20 years in the future, okay? You finish college, you're starting your career, figuring out where you want to live, maybe who you want to marry. Yeah, even you. You'll get married someday, believe it or not. Okay, so in this future, I mean, we old people have kind of left you with some significant challenges, right? From global warming to energy independence to economics and jobs. But you know the great thing about challenges? They're opportunities, especially for pioneers. So what I want to talk to you about is being a pioneer because you are in a room full of pieces of history that were put there by pioneers. And yes, you can be one of those pioneers. So we're going to talk about my passion, which is about aviation. Now, before we step into that future world that you're imagining in your own mind, let's go back 15 to 20 years, just for a second. And imagine this crazy device that instead of you know, having to pick up a payphone and call someone from house to house, you could literally call anyone, anywhere, at any time. In fact, the device is so crazily amazing that you can even attach, you can get information from any computer, anywhere in the world, anytime you want. Now, 20 years ago, that was insane Star Trek geek talk. And right now, it's the iPhone and every Android device out there. It's a reality for your generation. You never knew anything else. But these crazy ideas can turn into incredible things that make your life and my life better. And so in these challenging days in the future, it's an opportunity for pioneers to bring these crazy new things to make our lives better. So let's step back for a second, even further back, 100 years ago. Well, you know, they lived in a horse and buggy world. They th horse and buggies had been around for hundreds of years. They thought there was always going to be horse and buggies. And you know what? New York would be a different city if there was horse and manure everywhere, right? And because it was horse and buggy, the furthest they could travel is a couple miles each day. Because guess what? You're going three to four miles per hour. Now, I came from Williamsburg. That would have taken five hours to get here instead of 30 minutes for this event. So you know what? It's been an incredible thing to bring about faster transportation that can do more for us, right? They thought they were going to have trains forever, too, to get, go long distances. But what happened? New technologies came around. The automobile, which now, 100 years of progress. But you know, is that all we're going to have? Aircraft from the Wright brothers, a couple bicycle mechanics. Who, the nerve of them thinking they could change the world and invent aircraft. A couple bicycle mechanics. But what do we have today? 787 and commercial airliners that take us across the country in a few hours. But you know what? Are we always going to have these solutions? You know what? We're having a lot of problems with these solutions, right? We're getting into gridlock on the highways, uh, gridlock at these huge hub airports. What if there was another solution? What if a pioneer out there said, you know what, 15 to 20 years from now, I'm going to make things change. And instead of us being in the Hampton Roads and our daily mobility reach being that little area from Williamsburg to Chesapeake, what if our mobility reach was four times that speed? Well, if you go four times faster, all of a sudden the amount of area that you can cover is 16 times greater. And all of a sudden your daily commute could be all the way from Raleigh to Washington, D.C. So having a fast transportation device would change our lives. It would let you live in this Shenandoah Valley and work in Washington, D.C. Well, the only way to really have fast transportation is if you can start taking advantage of more degrees of freedom, like three dimensions in, in the sky, instead of one-dimensional ant trails on the highways. 
Well, people have had this vision for a long time. In fact, as long as the Wright brothers. But there's new technologies that are changing this vision and making it realistic. Just a month ago, NASA put on the largest aviation prize of all time, $1.65 million. And you know what that gave us? The first electric aircraft. They could go 200 miles, they could go over 100 miles per hour, and they did it so, with such a little amount of energy that they got over 400 miles per gallon. About 10 times better than a car. That's incredible. Other new technologies that are coming to bear. Well, just 10 years ago, if you thought about a car driving itself around, that was insane. Well, actually, if you look at the picture on the lower left, that is the Google autonomous car. And yes, right now they still have a person there, but he doesn't control the vehicle. It drives itself. Literally, you see that uh, 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 video? It has a laser that sprays out a, a, a low intensity laser so it's not gonna hurt you, and so it understands everything around it. The car literally sees its environment. Down on the right, you see a GM. That's, they're gonna be autonomous cars that literally drive themselves. Well, when you take that technology, all of a sudden, you can do a lot of neat new things. In fact, there's a whole new market coming about right now, which is called unmanned aerial vehicles or air, uh, aerial robots. And with this video, you can see literally these quadcopters are playing tennis with each other. They're juggling balls together because these are gonna be incredibly capable devices. They're essentially gonna be flying iPhones. And someday, you will have these everywhere from a lifeguard station to following your child to school to make sure that he's safe. We will have robotic birds that can do all sorts of things. Well, when you combine these technologies like electric propulsion and robotics and autonomous systems, all of a sudden, the sky is the limit. And you can be talking about, and you can be pioneering brand new ways of getting around. So it's not just your dad's Honda Civic that you're driving around. You're literally driving around something really cool like this. But is it enough to be cool? No, it's got to give you the capabilities that you need to be effective. And that's why these vehicles have to be able to be as easy to fly as driving a car. Low noise so that nobody's complaining about the amount of noise that they make incredibly low emissions or no emissions for electric aircraft, incredibly efficient. In fact, this little uh, Puffin aircraft can get 200 miles per gallon, take off vertically, land vertically, be able to get you where you want to go very quickly, very uh, efficiently. This also has to be affordable. We're not talking about something just for the macho elites and rich. We're talking about something that anyone could afford. And especially with electric propulsion, we're able to achieve incredible levels of safety and very, very affordably. It's not just one idea, it's all sorts of different flying vehicles that are going to be, you're gonna be seeing these in the next two to three years, prototypes, which over the next 15 to 20 years, you're going to be flying. Yes, you will be flying this aircraft because anyone, even you, can fly it. So don't be surprised by this future. It's a great future. It's your future. It just requires one thing, for you personally to be a pioneer and to believe that these challenges can be great opportunities. Thanks so much for your time.